Welcome. Uh, let me get the uh, the. Uh, Q1 numbers out of the way first. They trimmed down a Q1 GDP forecast right. from 6.9 percent to 6.8 percent. Mm -hmm. What's the story there? And is this something? Is this revision, downward revision, something you agree with? Well, the mild downward revision was uh, due largely to trade. Uh, the data was not available when the May numbers were released uh, earlier this year, and so when the March uh, official numbers came out, they had to factor in a slightly stronger import uh, number and uh, significantly slower export uh, figure. Well, one of the things that carried over between the first and the second quarter was election spending. As you know, there's the May elections had a lot of this, but it also was partially offset by a ban on public works. Tell us about how that factors mm. into your assessment for the second quarter. Well, the ban on public works doesn't really uh, have much of an impact on spending per se, as long as the projects are ready in the pipeline. Execution mode, So there right? are no new contracts, but uh, it doesn't mean that government cannot continue with the project. So that means that we will probably expect a very strong government expenditure number uh, for the second quarter. Mind you, the January numbers for spending was very weak, which means that there was a backloading of spending for maybe April and May. Mm -hmm. So having said that, what signposts are you looking for mm -hmm. in the next, uh, in second quarter GDP numbers? Mm -hmm. Is it consumer spending off the back of the election or is it fixed capital spending? Actually, it's, it's mostly spending, uh, still government still contributing significantly. Consumers, of course, because of uh, the election related expenditures will continue to be strong. But from the production side, we're actually quite optimistic that media, uh, you guys, uh, uh, maybe telecommunications uh, and, and all of these uh, typically cyclical um, uh, sectors that tend to benefit from the elections will continue to be positive. Which, just now that we're one off that one off experience <laughs> of the elections, there is a record breaking budget 3.3 trillion and 5.4 percent of the GDP going to infrastructure. Where do you see that money spending and, and being spent, and how does it? impact the economy in your view? Well, clearly the emphasis is on infrastructure outside uh, the key cities, no? where really the PPPs uh, are not very aggressively uh, intending any investments anytime soon. No? So it's the government trying to step in to address the infrastructure back backlog precisely to help poverty, uh, to reduce poverty significantly. No? Um, I want to bring up the, uh, now that you've talked about the budget, the record amount that, that was uh, being proposed, being tabled right now, 3.35 trillion pesos. I want to show you the breakdown of it all. Uh, large, the bulk really going to social services, housing, health, and so on and so forth. But then we've also got economic services. Mm -hmm. What did you make of these numbers when you first saw them? Well, social is services is really expected to continue to be priority. Uh, and it's actually a good sign that it's a continuation of the previous administration's emphasis in that uh, particular uh, budget item. Because we really need to spend, uh, to become more competitive, we really need to invest on our people, not only in terms of education, but in terms of health as well. No? Now, economic services also is seeing a very significant ramp up. And again, we're hoping that the projects will have a very significant impact on mobilizing resources that will enable the provinces, the areas outside Metro Manila, to benefit the most. Well, one sector that's beneath that economic service uh, you know, ambit is agriculture. I mean, there's a lot of underspending and underperforming in the Aquino administration. Where do you see the Duterte administration taking it, and how does it impact the economy there? Uh, for agriculture, again, it's, it's still basic infrastructure, which is key. I mean, we are an archipelago separated by um, a lot of water. We need very, very efficient ports. No? And the reason why locals are having difficulty selling to the local market, in fact, it's cheaper to import a lot of stuff from abroad, is because our uh, port infrastructure is uh, below par in terms of, of the regional standard. Now, if we can get it up to at least closer to that regional standard, we think this will help people sell products outside, uh, from people outside Metro Manila be able to sell products not only in Metro Manila, but to the global market. That's not even talking about the farm-to-market roads, right? And irrigation. Yeah, I mean, that's also part of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we do have to talk about it because agriculture is, of course, has been a quite the sore point over mm. the previous uh, GDP releases. If we take a look at it, share of GDP 
falling. And also, second quarter farm mm. output numbers were released yes. this week, and it fell 2.3%. Mm. That's for the second quarter. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look at the equation, on the downside, you have farm output. You have exports, as That's you right. alluded to earlier, still in the red. And then you also have remittances somewhat mm. shaky. What's going to push us to that magic 7% mark as the government So you asked me about for? the second half. Actually, we're a little bit... Uh, cautious about the outlook for the second half. In fact, we think the market should be prepared for the possibility of a slight and brief uh, slowdown. No? Um, for the simple reason that transitioning, political transition, uh, leadership transition, typically entails uh, some form of slowdown. If you look at Mr. Aquino's uh, track record, 2011 was a very disappointing year for the Philippines, just growing by 3.7 percent, mm -hmm. precisely because of the need for the new leaders of the new of the agencies in government to adjust to, to the new system. Well, one of the things also you, you t we talk about when we talk about the budget is the idea that they've got to get this budget approved first before they execute it and really pump prime the economy. Correct, correct. So do you think that's going to have a lag effect until, like, for example, the first quarter of 2017? Yes, we think the, the significant uh, re or the return to the trend of six, six and a half percent growth is probably going to happen late, latter part of the second quarter, uh, maybe fully felt in the third quarter of next year. But this government is very lucky. The new government is very lucky in the sense that, you know, it will be able to hit the ground running with a very well managed uh, fiscal position of the previous administration. It shouldn't have as much difficulty as Mr. Aquino had when he began his term back in 2011.